Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. I'll be your instructor for the day. Today we continue on in our series about energy with the topic of enzymes. When it comes to biologic reactions in the body, there is no actor more important than the enzyme. Now usually the next slide over would have objectives in my pretty face, but we got too many things to cover today, so you just get the objectives coming in with their nice little flash of light. First objective for the day, explain the concept of activation energy. Second thing, describe the activity of enzymes. Third, explain the ways that enzymes speed reactions. Relate temperature and pH to enzyme function. And explain enzyme inhibition. Don't be scared, I still think we can cover this in under 10 minutes. Let's see what we can do. Hey everybody, first thing to talk about, activation energy. Now. I've got it labeled as being an uphill battle because activation energy is the energy needed to get a reaction off the ground and running. I'm going to mark up my diagram over here. So in our diagram, we've got three things represented. We have got our reactants. That is the molecule that is going into your reaction, actually the two molecules that are going into your reaction. And you've got the product, which are the two molecules that come out of the reaction. In between, you've got this guy he is known as the transition state. Now something to note before we start talking about this, in our reactants, A is bonded to B and C is bonded to D. In the products, A to C, B to D. So what activation energy is, is it's the energy that is needed to take our reactants and move them to a place called the transition state where their bonds are stressed out enough that the atoms want to leave each other and join up with other atoms. You can think of this as being like a high school relationship. Everybody's happy here, A and B are hooked up, C and D are hooked up. Something happens, there's a lot of stress that is caused, the bonds between those kids start to get a little shaky, eventually things break apart and you end up with two new pairings. The energy that was needed to get that going is the activation energy. It is your initial uphill push. Now, this reaction you may react or may recognize from a previous video, it is an exergonic reaction. Ultimately, this reaction is giving off more energy than is needed to get it going. So it's got a negative delta G, which means that your body isn't really going to have to spend any energy overall. It takes a little bit to get going. That activation energy is an input of energy. But once you get to the top of the hill and cruise down, by here you've recovered the energy that you put in and there you're getting some extra energy out. So ultimately, though there is an activation energy to get things going, you still get energy out of this reaction. You think of it also like striking a match. You put in the energy to rub that match against the box. After the thing bursts into flames, everything happens spontaneously and gives up way more energy than you used to run that thing against the box. In our chemical reactions, enzymes are a helping hand. Their whole purpose is to speed up reactions and the way they speed up reactions is by lowering the activation energy. So essentially they make it easier for the reaction to get going. Right here you got a reaction diagrammed. In the first reaction right here it takes all this energy to get to the top of the hill. The activation energy is pretty high. Introduce an enzyme to the mix and he makes the energy needed to get going much lower. The activation energy is lower. So because it takes less energy to get going, this reaction with the help of an enzyme can happen much more quickly because you don't have to do as much work to get up the hill. You get up the hill quick, which means you can get down the hill quick. So know that enzymes make things go quicker by lowering the activation energy. They lower the activation energy in four different ways, which I got my slides out of order. That's on the next slide. Let's talk about enzymes for a second. Enzymes are specific to the substrate that they work with. Now, substrate is whatever molecule they are acting on. You can think of enzymes and substrates as being like a lock and a key. If our enzyme shape is wrong, let's say it's been denatured, it'll no longer fit with its substrate. And if the substrate's shape is wrong, it won't fit with the enzyme. A couple anatomy pieces on our enzyme. Note that little groove in the middle. That is the active site. The active site is where the substrate binds, and it's where all the magic happens. That's where the enzyme does its work on the substrate. Now if that active site isn't right, the substrate will not be able to fit in there, which means our reaction 
cannot happen. So it's really important to our enzymes that they maintain their shape. When the enzyme and the substrate are bonded together, we have an enzyme substrate complex. And this complex is something that comes and goes. Every time a substrate cycles through there, that enzyme opens and closes and opens and closes. So you don't have any strong bonds being formed between the substrate and the enzyme, just kind of like a weak interaction as the enzyme holds that substrate in place to get the work done and then kicks it out. Now, like I said a second ago, there are four ways that our enzymes speed up a reaction. You can remember those four ways as team MODS, M-O-D-S. The M stands for micro environment. Sometimes a substrate needs just the perfect environment in order to react. So let's say you are in a cell where the cytoplasm is slightly basic, but our substrate needs a little bit of an acidic environment. The enzyme specific to that substrate might provide an acidic environment just in the active site so that when that uh, substrate binds, he's got his acidic environment, he can react more quickly and our reaction will proceed. O stands for orientation. Sometimes two substrates need to be positioned just right before they can react. If they were just floating out in the cytoplasm all willy-nilly, they may not meet up and fit together like the puzzle pieces that they are. So our enzyme takes those two substrates, lines them up just right. Once they're lined up right, they can hook up and vacate the active site so that two more substrates can come in. D stands for direct participation. Every now and then our substrate needs a little muscle. In the case of direct participation, our enzyme actually forms a strong bond onto that substrate and adds an atom or pulls an atom off. Either way, it's working directly on that substrate itself. Finally, we have got stressing bonds. Sometimes just a little stress is needed in those bonds and then they'll break and be ready to go and reform or do whatever they got to do. So in these cases, our enzyme will hook up with the substrate flex a little bit so that the bonds in the substrate get stressed out and then once the bonds are stressed out our substrate is ready to react so remember team mods help our enzymes or are the way that enzymes help to lower the activation energy now our enzymes are very very particular about the conditions that they work in every enzyme likes to have a specific temperature and ph they might work okay outside of their happy temperature and pH, but they work best when the temperature is just right and when the pH is just right. Now, it's gonna be specific to the enzyme. Enzymes that are in your stomach work best at a very acidic pH. An enzyme that is in your blood is gonna work at a pH that is closer to the 7.4 that is your blood. Concentration is also an important thing to note. You can up the concentration of a substrate all day long, but if you don't have enough enzymes, that's not gonna make the reaction go any faster. However, throw more enzyme into a mix and your reaction is gonna speed up because there are more enzymes available to bond with the substrate. So know that you can speed a reaction by adding enzymes, but not by adding substrates. Coenzymes are our partners in crime for the enzyme. That was a lot of rhyming. Anyway, just know that a cofactor is a partner that helps the enzyme. There are some enzymes that cannot work until a cofactor binds with them. In a lot of cases, coenzymes are not proteins. Sometimes they are, but generally they're not. They could be a mineral, they could be a vitamin, they could be all kinds of things. But when that coenzyme binds to the enzyme, the enzyme might change shape, it might become activated. Somehow, some way, it gets into a state where it's ready to do its work. And Enzymes that require a coenzyme can't get their work done without their partners. So now coenzymes and cofactors help enzymes to do their work. Our last topic for the day is inhibition. Our enzymes can be inhibited. There's got to be some way to regulate their activity, of course. So there's two types of inhibition. You've got competitive inhibition and non-competitive inhibition. In competitive inhibition, there is a competition going on. Whatever your inhibitor is, gets in and it just binds straight up in that active site. It's kind of like it gets there first, so it gets priority. Because this inhibitor is bound into the active site, our substrate isn't able to get there. If our substrate can't get there, then obviously the enzyme can't do its work. So just know that competitive inhibition, your inhibitor gets right up in that active site and it blocks the substrate. Our non-competitive inhibitor He's a little sneakier. 
he binds somewhere else on the enzyme. So in our little picture right here, your competitive inhibi inhibitor is binding right there. When he binds, he causes the enzyme to change shape. If the shape of our enzyme changes, we know that he doesn't fit together with our substrate anymore. So our non-competitive inhibitor isn't bonding into that active site, but he is still bonding somewhere on the enzyme that causes the enzyme to change shape, which means that our enzyme can no longer complex with the substrate. So I know that was a lot of stuff. I tried to go through it fairly quickly. I hope it was helpful to you, and hopefully you will join us again on the Lab 207 webcast. Have a good day.